you create your own reality may seem a kind of hallucinogen new age, that has nothing to do with the real world of money, power, politics, the homeless, AIDS or with your personal life. Not understood, the statement seems, at best, an empty clicky and at worst is always causing guilt, slanderous and totally irrelevant. What I have to do with the world at war, with a congenital anomaly, with an economy that is out of control. And more personal way, what I have to do with my life beginning, my family, sex, race, my country or economic status these are not simple questions. Trust in appearances to evaluate existing invariable and is likely to seem totally chaotic a roll of the dice. The problem is that the invariants are constantly changing, as are the absolute truths of yesterday gave way to absolute truths of today and tomorrow. It is no surprise that smart people sometimes opt for skepticism. It is a beneficial transition energy. She questions and investigates what is false, but remains open to learning. Sri Aurobindo, who is both mystical and intellectual time, once said first I believe that nothing was impossible, and at the same time I begin to question everything. But the cynicism, unlike skepticism, is an alley dead end in the search for understanding. I once was told in the spirit a cynic is someone who tried to transfer to God in his own image and failed. The cynical tend to say that there is no cause or intelligence guide, transcendent or otherwise. Those who study some of our myths report that an anthropomorphic deity took all the decisions for us, giving us the role we are playing. If you were born blind Vietnamese who died in an offensive naphthenic acid at four years of age, well, that's just a plan outlined by the deity. It is not in our power to know why. It's just a mystery. Over the centuries, however, ancient teachings around the world have told us that reality is not something that is done to us. Us is that we have created. Perhaps the word we should be underlined because many of the realities that we experience are those we did together. When we observe the enormous challenges of our lives and times, we see that it is worth undertake a serious investigation into the possibility of being in fact creators as a first consideration, could result from some sensible clashes with our egos, but just imagine the implications that isn't creating the future. It is dangerous oversimplification when discussing how we create our own realities. First, it was not with this life we get. The you that is beyond personality, the real you, always existed. There was never time when you were not. There will never be time that will not exist. If you can accept that at some higher level of existence, you have chosen the type of life that is now experiencing because it would give you the greatest opportunities for growth and contribution, you will see that all these realities established, with which it started, had reason to be. The fact of being born a Jewish man in Manhattan, not an Islamic woman in Tehran, is the first important part of creating the reality in the life of a person. No matter how you think you came into the world, it was something intentional. Many things have been created by this choice of birth. For example, a girl who was born in the midst of abject poverty in a third world country. It was one of those kids with the big eyes that we usually see on television documentaries. She lived under these conditions until the age of 10, when it opened the next phase of their journey, apparently unlikely it was adopted by a family in the United States that it could offer the opportunity he needed. When she arrived, she did not speak a word of English. Ten years later, this girl was attending graduate school with a scholarship, majoring in political science with a commitment to improve the living conditions in third world countries. This girl incarnated with a brilliant intelligence. The purpose of his soul was to enjoy this life to serve the world. In preparation for the life that he intended to adopt, she printed her consciousness in the early years of life, with devastating poverty, and after this was done, it was time to train the intellect. If she had been born privileged, could not have worried enough that his talent was put to service in the world. The way it happened, she was enthusiastic about the reform at the level of the soul and received the opportunity to do this through their training. It could also have had the opportunity to work through personal revolt against injustice in the world, learning to transform the frustration and pain of his early years. But this is part of the preparation to be an effective working tool. Once on the earth plane, each of us lives in the midst of many realities and exercises the ability to create within them all. 
First, we have the experience on ourselves as individuals who make choices based on predispositions, personal needs, preferences and unconscious motives. These choices create our realities. If I injure my body with unhealthy food, I refuse to do physical exercises and continually envenom me with negative thoughts, I end up creating a personal reality that will return me the results of those choices within weeks or years. Secondly, we also live realities in which we play only one role. You and I are parts of families who provided us not only our genetic heritage, but also our ideas about family values. In return, we contribute to the history of our family from the moment we were born. Even if we were to run away from home, our rejection would affect everyone and become part of the family history. The sexes also help shape our realities. At birth, we inherit all the prevailing attitudes of our sex all the myths, prohibitions and expectations. While we cannot change ourselves, the universal perceptions of male and female, the choices we make to live our lives as men and women will certainly influence the whole. Finally, we are influenced by the reality of our species and participate in its creation. We are thinking only cells in the human mind. Our attitudes and beliefs, our visions and our fears shed in the collective ocean in which we are all swimming. The uniqueness of life. The myth that we are separated and isolated, that each of us is a closed system, is now dissolving in the greater truth that each of us has an influence on what you see. Since 1902, when Werner Heisenberg developed the principle of uncertainty, science has shown that there is no strictly objective analysis. Our observation of a thing is part of their reality and ours too. In the book of David Peet, Synchronicity the bridge between matter and mind Synchronicity the bridge between matter and mind, is quoted physicist John Wheeler We had the old idea that there was a world out there and here he was the man, as an observer, safely protected from the universe by a six-inch glass plate. Now we learn, with the quantum world that even to observe such a tiny object as the electron, we have to break the glass plate. We have to reach in there, so the old word observer should simply be abolished from books and, instead, we should introduce the participant term. Thus, we come to understand that the universe is a participatory universe. Quantum physics teaches us that nothing exists in isolation. Any matter of subatomic particles to galaxies, is part of a complex network of relationships within a unified whole. The work of physicist David Baum on subatomic particles and quantum potential led him to conclude that if the physical beings appear to be separated in space and time, they actually are connected or unified in plight or unifying way. Under the undisputed realm of things or isolated events lies an implicit field of individual whole, and all this implicit connects all things. An ancient Sanskrit teaching reports that in Indra's paradise is a network of pearls woven in such a way that if you look at one of them, you will see all the other reflected in it. Similarly, every object in the world is not merely itself, but encompasses all other objects and, in fact, it is all the other objects. Today, we recognize the reality of Indra's net in the amazing multidimensionality of the hologram. The holograms may be better understood by way of illustration. If you get a holographic image of a dog and extend only a part of it, say, the head, you get more than a picture of the dog's head. You get the whole dog. The dog's head is a part of the whole, and the whole is present in each of its parts. The Stanford neurophysiologist Carl Pribram considers that the hologram can be a model of the human brain and, even more, which can reflect the structure of our entire universe. The energy healing and information are transmitted through the unifying medium that connects all life, the implicate order bomb, and this means is beyond time and space we normally realize. We are inseparable from all of nature. We cannot upset the balance of nature and hope that we are not affected, and cannot harm our life without our family is reached. The book Resettling America Energy, Ecology, and Community Reorganizing Energy, Ecology and Community in America, Gary Coates tells a story that highlights what happens when we refuse to comply with the complex system of interdependence of nature. A common history in today. The World Health Organization WHO spread DDT in some Borneo villages in an attempt to eradicate malaria. The villages were formed by row houses, low, covered with straw, in which lived about 500 people in a single core, 
so it was a simple thing to spray huts with insecticide. The short-term effect was a significant drop in the incidence of malaria. But it did not take long for the villages were invaded by rats of the forest carrying fleas in the fur. It was a certain problem worryingly, since fleas were suffering from plague. In fact, many animals come to live in huts covered with straw. There were cockroaches, lizards and cats. DDT was absorbed by cockroaches, which were eaten by geckos. These, in turn were eaten by dogs. But as DDT becomes increasingly concentrated as it spread through the food chain, the cats is that all eventually died, poisoned by DDT. With the disappearance of the village cats, the way was clear for the rats invaders. To solve this new problem, the WHO had to draw parachute cats in the villages. But that was not the only side effect. Small lizards also lived in huts. When DDT caused the death of the lower body that was predatory insects, the number of geckos increased rapidly. Unfortunately, the geckos started to feed the straw roofs. It was not long until entire villages come down. We really have created all our realities, but not necessarily created by themselves. We are co-creators with other people and with nature. We create personal worlds with immediate feedback, and personal realities in the long run that lead many lives to manifest. We also help create realities of family, race, sex, species and the planet. We are participating, not victims, of a world we influence by all the choice we make. Conclusion and blog note. Whenever intentionally extinguish a way of life, we are disrespecting life. Whenever we buy products from manufacturers who exploit people, we are contributing to the overall reality of abuse. When we pollute the environment, even with an act so insignificant as to play a soda can through the car window, put in motion a domino effect in nature. With each oversight in relation to the physical environment, we are helping to create spaces for virulent new diseases to incubate. Every time we sold the sea of our unified consciousness, with violence and fear, are contributing to the moment when this violence and this fear arise in our personal lives. On the other hand, whenever we become instruments of an act of justice, no matter how small it is, add a little bit of justice to everyone. Every time we took a little bit of fear within ourselves, we are doing it for everyone. When we love, we forgive, we respect all life and interact without causing damage, we are contributing to these values a reality for all of us. When we see a child suffering due to extreme poverty, a man fighting for freedom languishing in a political prison, a young man whose life is being destroyed by drugs, we say, it could be me, not for the help of God maybe also we should tell them a thank you sound. Your nightmare is also a sacrifice that allows all of us to understand more clearly what needs to be purified in each of us. We are also in a related that, as when botanical once harvesting a flower is shake a star.